Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today, I have a new video where we're going to talk about cables, studio cables, specifically audio cables that we're using in the studio environment. Um, I get a lot of questions about my preferences in terms of, you know, what are my favorite mic cables? What do I like to use for my speaker cables? Uh, what is the difference between a balanced and an unbalanced connection? Should you use XLR or TRS? Uh, there's a lot of different options out here. Should you invest in expensive cables? Is it actually worth it? So I just want to talk about some of my uh, different opinions on that and also just my experience and what gives me the best results. So uh, first, let's talk about mic cables. And um, this is an XLR, balanced XLR cable, and it is shielded. And these are uh, the ones that I really like to use because they're low noise and you want to get something that's you know pretty thick, pretty substantial. These are probably, I don't know, 18 gauge, 20 gauge, something like that. But um, you also want to do as short of a run, meaning you want the cable to be as short of a length as you need. The longer the run, generally speaking, the uh, more chance of it picking up some kind of interference. Now, there are a couple of different types of mic cables. So there is this, which is just a standard microphone cable, and there's also what's called a quad cable. So a quad cable, we won't get too scientific today, but uh, basically inside this wire, there are uh, different smaller wires that carry carry the signal, and then there's also ground wires. So the quad cable, instead of having three, which this standard mic cable has three wires in it, the quad cable has four. So the quad cable has some redundancy in terms of how it's carrying the signal, which by definition should give you more shielding and have lower noise. So I've used both quad and standard. I think standard mic cables, if you get a good quality standard mic cable, it's not going to be that much of a difference between the quad. So next, let's talk about speaker cable. This is something that is, again, very important for the engineers out there or for anybody, you know, you're running studio monitors, you've got a connection between your audio interface and then you're going into your monitors. So my preference again is to use an XLR cable, a balanced XLR connection. For those of you out there that who may not have an XLR connection on the back of your monitors, you're probably going to have what is called a TRS connection, which is this, uh, one eighth uh, little plug here and you'll see this is trs this is balance we've got two rings on the tip and uh, again you definitely want to be using balanced cables speaker cables for your monitors i have picked up unbalanced speaker cable in the past by accident and not really known the difference between trs and ts which is unbalanced and uh, you can definitely tell a difference in terms of the uh, amount of noise and interference they pick up. I had some buzzing. I was picking up like local radio stations uh, using some of these unbalanced cables with speaker cables. So very important to use a balanced connection. As far as instrument cables, it's not quite as important to have a balanced connection. You know, with typical guitar uh, plugs here, we've just got a uh, an unbalanced. This is just a single uh, ring tip. And uh, this is because, you know, in the live setting and things like that, noise is not necessarily as much of a worry. But just as a rule of thumb, most instrument cables offered are unbalanced. Let's talk about interconnecting cables. So these are just, you know, cables that you use to connect certain devices to other devices in your studio. For instance, um, I have a tube preamp that I run my mic through and I then run that into my interface. So let's talk about this for a second because some of you out there are probably using external preamps and you're having to wire things in this way. So you have your microphone that goes into the uh, mic input of your preamp and then you've got the output of your preamp going into your interface. Now you've got a couple of different options in most cases of how you do this. The first way would just to be a typical analog connection. So let's say you have an XLR just analog output on your preamp and then you bring that back in either into a mic or a line input and you can do that with XLR or TRS whichever you have. The other way is to do it in with a digital connection. Now this is my preference. I use what's called AES. It's a digital uh, signal type and uh, it looks a lot like an XLR cable 
in terms of the actual connection, but uh, it is a, uh, a different cable. It does have some different internal wiring to, to uh, carry the signal, give you some more shielding protection. And so what I do is I run the AES connection out of my preamp, and then I run it into the AES input of my interface. And then, of course, the interface is just going through USB or Thunderbolt or whatever connection you have, digital. But that way, I'm not making that analog connection more than I need to. I'm, I've got the mic going into the preamp, but then it's going straight to digital and then into the interface and staying digital going into my computer. And I've just found that I get the best quality when I'm limiting the amount of those uh, analog wirings between devices. It just works better to go ahead and uh, make that digital connection when you can. All right, so a lot of people ask me, should you invest in you know really expensive cable? What's the difference? The important thing is to do some research and figure out what is going on inside of the cables from the companies that you're buying your cables from because they're not all equal. I've seen some cables when they get cut open that uh, show you that the shielding isn't done properly. I wouldn't trust all these different devices in your studio with a super cheap cable that you don't know for a fact is going to be uh, quality. You know, if you've already invested in, you know, a good interface, a good preamp, why would you sacrifice, you know, a couple of bucks on an inferior cable that's not going to give you the best capabilities for your gear? You can still get affordable cable, but don't get cheap quality cable because it will make a difference. I promise you there are differences between balanced and unbalanced for sure. That's something that you want to be very aware of. Also, you know, if you can get an XLR connection between your speakers, that helps tremendously. And if you have the luxury of using a digital uh, connection like AES, that's also going to help. And using quad cable is as good as it gets. One last tip I have for y'all is be careful about how you run your cables. I actually have cable management that's built in the backside of this desk. And what that allows me to do is run cables without having, say, my mic cable being run against like as in physically touching power cables and firewire cables or USB or Thunderbolt or whatever cables that are being run into my computer. Uh, even when you have a shielded cable, it can still uh, get uh, some interference in there. I've had it happen where, you know, this is a shielded mic cable, this uh, ProLink performer from Monster. And uh, if I have it touching another cable that has some interference in it, it will introduce that in, into my mic. So you want to be careful, especially with the mic cable about that. The other cables you generally don't have a problem. Sometimes the monitors will pick up some interference, but uh, usually, you know, just the mic is what you want to have isolated and not touching a lot of other cables. All right, y'all. So just a quick intro on a couple of different cable types, as well as my preferences on how I'm connecting different things in the studio. Uh, and also my thoughts on buying quality cables. So it's not so much about buying expensive cables. You can still keep your cables within budget, but just make sure that you know what you're buying and what those cables are made up of because you don't want to sacrifice quality at the cable stage. So if you have any questions about audio cables in your studio or the ones that I'm using specifically in my studio, feel free to leave a comment below. If you learned anything in the video, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. We'll talk to you soon.